Herzlich willkommen bei Hi und Delfin TV. Heute freue ich mich ganz besonders auf Rick O'Berry von Dolphin Project. Now I change to English. Hello Rick, I'm very happy to have you here. Hello, um, hello. And uh, you are a very famous person, so I'm quite excited. <laughs> you, you are the trainer of Flipper, so who is not knowing you or not knowing Flipper? Oh, well, not too many people remember Flipper. That was a long, long time ago. Yeah, okay, it's a long time ago, but I think yeah. every child can remember Flipper. Okay, maybe not the, the new generation, but like we. Yeah. <laughs> was this a was good, this a good thing? thing? What happened, what happened off, the off the flipper? To oh, the well, um, what happened afterwards, um, I became an activist, I suppose. I didn't plan on doing that, but that's the way it turned out. And, and uh, that was like 50 years ago, I think. But I'm still doing that work. Um, my relationship before Flipper, during Flipper, was a utilitarian relationship <coughs> with dolphins. Mm -hmm. uh, but after Flipper, it became very different. Uh, it wasn't about what they could do for me. And so that changed dramatically and, of course, it changed my life. But I never planned on continuing doing this 50 years later. I don't really want to do it. It's not something anybody should do, actually. Uh, but I get pulled into various things uh, from time to time, and some of those things take years and years to resolve, like in the Solomon Islands. My son is there now, and they have a dolphin drive, just like they do in Taiji, Japan. Oh. oh. Yeah, and we're working with the uh, tribe that does the hunt, trying to show them alternatives, and they're very receptive, unlike Taiji, Japan. They Japanese dolphin hunters are not receptive for change, uh, but they are in the Solomon Islands. Okay. We also work in Indonesia. That's a very long, long process of trying to shut down the traveling dolphin shows. Uh, circus Lumba Lumba, they call it. And it's literally a traveling dolphin circus. And they put dolphins in a truck and they truck them to a, a village. They dig a hole in the ground and fill it full of water and salt and chlorine. And they put bleachers, seats around and put a tent over it. And for about a month, they will make as much money as they can. And then they move to the next town. And there are several of these in Indonesia. Uh, it's a very, very difficult place to work because it's so corrupt. It's the most corrupt place, I think, on planet Earth. So those three places are the three places that we work the most. The three most difficult places are Taiji, Japan, Indonesia, and Solomon Islands. And that's where we are. Okay, great. Okay. But what happened? You were a trainer, a flipper, and why you became an activist afterwards? Well, in the 1960s, we didn't have the information that mm -hmm. we have today. It was a very different world. I was a very different person. So were you. We were all very different, and we were operating with limited information. Today, we know that there's only three things that are killing dolphins, our fishing nets, our pollution, and our captivity. I didn't know any of that back in the 1960s. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so... You know, When you become aware of these things, you get involved, and, and sometimes they take many years, to, as I said earlier, to resolve these issues. But I think we will shut down the Traveling Dolphin Show in the next year or so in, in, in uh, Bali. And we have already built a rehabilitation center in central Java, okay. which, which is... Uh, where all the dolphins came from. That's their original home range. That's where they were stolen from, from the national park. So we built the sea pen a quarter of a mile offshore where the dolphins uh, were, that's where they were living. That's their home range. These are resident dolphins. There are, there are transient dolphins, dolphins that travel great miles, like in Taiji. All of those are transient dolphins that are migrating 
but in Indonesia and Bali, these are resident dolphins. They're there all year round. And so they can be returned to their residence with a little cooperation from the government. That's all we really need. I think it is a very, very important word. Dolphins are not made to travel with humans. They're made to travel in the sea. They're basically disposable dolphins. They die along the way and they dump them and they get more. They can get them really cheap from fishermen who say they accidentally got caught in their nets, but actually they went out and deliberately caught them and sold them to this traveling dolphin show. So that's one of the things we're working on, shutting that down. Did the death of Kathy Flipper has something to do with your big change? Oh, of course. Yeah, it had everything to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the death of many other dolphins that I captured myself, um, nobody was paying attention to the, the mortality rate. And I remember one day at the Miami Sea Aquarium, uh, we were about to bury one of the dolphins that died in the main tank. And, uh, and there was a particular area where we would bury the bodies. And I remember being back there, um, and we were carrying the dead dolphin on a stretcher. And we, myself and this other guy, we were like looking for a place to bury it. We couldn't find a place because it, it was full. And I, I realized uh, there's a high price to pay for this entertainment. So it wasn't just the death of Flipper, the death of many of the dolphins at the sea aquarium, by the sea aquarium. Wow. The I was reading, but I don't know if it's true, the truth, that the dolphin can kill himself. He can stop breathing. That's, yeah, that's a theory. And I subscribe to that theory. I've seen that. I've witnessed that many times. I, I see it in, in Japan, in Taiji, in the coat. Where okay. They'll, uh, just take that breath and not take another one and just sink to the bottom. You have to understand they're not automatic air breathers. Like if you pass out in that chair, you're going to continue breathing on the floor. Uh, if the doctor puts you to sleep to do dental work or something, you will continue breathing. But that's not true with the dolphin. Every breath is a conscious effort. And so if you think about that for a moment, uh, all one has to do is not take the next breath. And that is that is literally self-induced asphyxiation, and that is suicide. So I, I use that word with some trepidation because it sounds anthropomorphic suicide. But yeah, I think that dolphins commit suicide okay. and, and whales, other whales. If life becomes too unbearable, they don't have to take that next breath. Wow. Wow. Is... is to, to wake, wake up the people, up the is it a good idea, idea to see the film, see the, the film, Cove, the or, read the, or read the book? Oh yeah, the Cove movie did more to educate people about the dolphin captivity issue than anything ever. There was nothing before that that really defined uh, this issue. So the Cove, the movie, um, is not just about killing dolphins in a cove in Japan. It's really about the dolphin captivity issue in general. And it's about a lot of other things. Um, yeah, highly, highly educational. Everybody should see it for many reasons. It has a lot to do with mercury. It has to do with our relationship with the ocean. I'm not the filmmaker, by the way. It's not my film. It sounds like I'm, I'm promoting my movie, but I, I don't make any money from this movie. And, but I want people to see it because it's the most educational uh, film about the dolphin captivity issue. And also Blackfish, another film about specifically about SeaWorld and orcas. Uh, it's another very good one that was inspired by the code, according to the director. Mm -hmm. I find it very hard to see, but we have to open up the eyes if we want to help the, del the dolphins. Yeah, it's there. There are some scenes in there very hard to watch. It's hard for me to. I only saw it once, 
and that was enough. But I would like everybody to see it, and people do see it in schools all over the world. Um, that's one of the reasons I set this iPad up so that uh, when kids see it for the first time and they're in an auditorium in the school, like in Nepal, Nepal, in, in, in Nepal, in uh, the Himalayas, I, I talked to 300 kids the other day, uh, and they just saw the Cove. To them, it was a brand new movie because they never saw it before. And they all had questions. So I can do the Q&A question and answer period after the movie live in an audience full of kids on a big screen just after they see it. Just like I'm talking to you now. And so this technology is really very, very helpful in terms of educating people. Because mm -hmm. I do this all over the world now, uh, this kind of um, Q&A or interviews like I'm doing with you. I used to have to fly to all these places in the old days. And then when I got there, when I'm talking to a journalist, I would have to explain the problem of captivity because the journalist doesn't get it. The journalist probably went to SeaWorld, had his family with him. Uh, it's a beautiful day. The music is playing. The water is magic blue. The dolphin is smiling back. It's hard to see the problem. So in doing an interview, I would have to define the problem to somebody who doesn't get it. Because of the Cove movie, if that journalist has seen the Cove movie, I don't have to define the problem or explain the problem anymore. So on a personal level, that's very, very helpful to me. Uh, because if I'm talking to a journalist and I know they saw the Cove, we can talk about solutions now instead of trying to explain what's wrong with captivity, which is uh, I, I've been doing for 50 years and the need to create sanctuaries to uh, rehabilitate and release those that can be and retire those that can't be released. And Greece is a good place for that. There's a uh, group um, in uh, Lipsy in Samos also, maybe you're familiar with Archipelagos organization. Yes. And so they have a very beautiful cove there that the mayor is working with them to turn that into a, uh, it's not just for dolphins, it could be sea turtles or, or uh, birds or whatever. And uh, monachos, 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 monachos. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous. And it's hard to find a location like that. It's really, really difficult because when you have a body of water like the cove in Lipsy, usually it's a marina or it's a resort or something because it's a very high value property, the cove, protected cove, it's very protected. And uh, so you can find out more about that at, uh, I guess, archipelago.org. Um, but they're, 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 so they're, that's one place. There's about 10 of these small uh, sanctuaries being considered in different parts of Europe. Okay. And, and that's great progress for me to be to, to, to know about that because we've been advocating that for years and years and years. We're a very small organization. We want to keep it that way. We don't have the money, the millions of dollars it takes to build this sanctuary. But the animal welfare industry has it in their savings account. They need to take it out and spend it and quit talking about sanctuaries and do it. Just do it. And the sanctuaries, the dolphins, they the dolphins need they because need they were, because grown, they were uh, born, born, in born in captivity and they cannot and live, they cannot uh, live completely free anymore. anymore. Yeah, exactly. There, there are some that are, well, that's one group. Yeah, the, those that were born in captivity. But there are many of them, I believe, who are mentally unhealthy. Even if they were born in the wild and they've been in a concrete box the size of this room for 25, 30 years, I question their mental health. Okay. And uh, they might be better off retiring than being set free. I've always believed that. I've never said this publicly, but I believe that about Free Willy, Keiko. I don't think Keiko was a candidate to be released back into the wild. This is a transient dolphin. You know, there are resident dolphins mm -hmm. like Lolita and Corky who could, I think, successfully be taken back to their home range and spend some time rehabilitating and perhaps connect up with their family again. 
very different for a dolphin. Um, and the orca is a dolphin. It's the largest dolphin. Very different for an orca to try and find its family after they're migrated 20 years ago somewhere. But uh, so I felt that uh, $15 million spent on freeing, trying to free one dolphin might be better spent building a sanctuary for Keiko. Keiko would still be alive. And as an added bonus, you get a sanctuary, which we desperately need. So I know I'm on the odds with uh, a lot of people that don't agree with me, but I, I don't think all of these uh, dolphins are candidates to be released into the wild. I almost said back into the wild, but those that are born in these buildings throughout Europe, um, they have never seen the wild. They don't know what, so they're not going back to the wild. They don't even know what the wild is. They have never, there are dolphins in Europe. Belgium is a good example. Dolphins who were born inside of a building, the ones in Finland who just went to Greece, the Attica Zoo, some of them were born inside that building. They have never seen a live fish in their life. They have never seen a wild dolphin. They have never seen, they, they don't know what the tide is or the current, things we take for granted. These dolphins, I call them battery dolphins. They think that the roof is the sky. They have never seen the sky. Wow. So these are freaks that we have created for our amusement. Uh, can they be set free in the, no. Of course not. That would be irresponsible. But they could go to a sanctuary in Greece. Ellipse is a good place. Crete is another good place. And there are others in Italy. Small operations that don't cost a lot of money because, you know, the economy is very difficult now in Greece and spending tens of millions of dollars on retiring a dolphin. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually quite inexpensive to do. If you have access to fish, fish is the most expensive, buying 25, 30 pounds of fish for each dolphin every day, and a salary for a few people. But you can do this in small lagoons like in Lipsy and places, uh, and it can be done by the community. That's the best way to do it. That's how it would be done in Lipsy and hopefully in, in Crete as well. Uh, so these are the things that we're, we're working on also besides Indonesia and Solomon Islands and uh, Japan. Great. Would it be Would also it be a also good idea, idea that, people that people could meet, meet these um, dolphins, um, dolphins in the, in the sanctuaries? sanctuaries? Or would you, uh, would you better leave, leave them in peace? peace? Yeah. Uh, the, see, that's got to be explored. These sanctuaries don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. We have sanctuaries. We have sanctuaries for lions and tigers and elephants and orangutans and gorillas and dogs and cats, but there are none for dolphins, right? So we don't know what to expect in the long term because every one of those dolphins have a different experience. Most of them have a different experience, and they're all different. And I've done this before and actually released them back into the wild in Guatemala, Nicaragua, Colombia, Brazil, Haiti. South Korea. Uh, in Brazil, for example, we rehabilitated and released the last captive dolphin back into the wild. His name was Flipper. It was the last captive dolphin. And he was in captivity for about 12 years, I think. Uh, I wasn't sure that this one could be released back into the wild. So we found out where he was captured, a place called Laguna. Brazil, which was 300 miles away from where we were in Santos. And we got a helicopter and flew him there. And the community built a very large sea pen there. And our attitude was we were going to try our best to reconnect Flipper with his original pot that was still there. His mother, Flipper's mother, was still there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We know that because we found the guy who actually captured Flipper 12 years earlier. His name was Tito. He was a fisherman. And Tito told me this story that he, um, how he captured Flipper. He says, I took Flipper away from Riscadero. Riscadero is the name of one of the females. And they know the names of the dolphins in this part of uh, uh, 
Laguna because it's one of the unique places in the world where dolphins actually drive the fish right up to the fishermen's nets. And the fishermen are standing in the water, uh, knee deep, sometimes up to their waist, and they'll be in a line, maybe 15 or 20 fishermen. And the dolphins bring in the tahinia, which are mullet, small mullet fish, and the fishermen see the fish come, coming and they throw their cast nets and they literally create a wall of nets. And of course the fishermen get a lot of fish from that, but not all of the fish get caught in the net. They actually bounce off and the dolphins are able to catch these fish. So it's funny, I talk to these fishermen a lot and they, they talk about this special relationship they have with the dolphins, symbiotic relationship, they call it. I don't agree. I think it's a utilitarian relationship because the dolphins, from what I observe, are using these fishermen and the fishermen are using the dolphins. And they both profit from this uh, relationship. They, they, so they, they know the names of the, 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 what they call the good dolphins. Not all the dolphins do this, only about 15 of them. And, um, and so they have the names of them, and, and one of them is Riscadero. And Riscadero had a young dolphin uh, by her side named Flipper, and that's he was captured and taken to a sea circus in Santos. <clears throat> Excuse me just a minute. I have a, I got a visitor here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Oh, you creepy. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Never mind. Never mind. Are you taping? Yep. Yeah. Not a problem. Not we a are problem. all we human, are human beings, beings, and we have animals. <laughs> so, do so you think do you also think that also the that smile of the dolphin, the dolphin doesn't really help the dolphin? Help the dolphin. Okay, it doesn't also help the, the, the shark the that he looks that like he looks. Like he looks. But the dolphin, dolphin smile, we. Yeah, we I don't. know what you mean. I know what you mean, and um, the answer is no. It's not a real smile. It's an optical, it's an optical illusion. And this multi-billion dollar captivity industry is founded in that optical illusion. That's what they, that's how they make their money, fooling the people. Like the journalists I told you earlier, who may go to SeaWorld or to the Attica Zoo and see the dolphin show and doesn't see the problem. He sees, uh, you know, the music is playing and you got your family with you and it's a beautiful blue sky and sunny day and the dolphin is smiling back. It's an optical illusion. Unless you're hitting the dolphin with a baseball bat, you can't see the abuse. It's hidden. It's an optical illusion. And so that whole industry is based around that. So it, that's a very good question. Is it a real smile? No, it's not. If they didn't have that smile, they would not be in captivity. Probably. That's what I think, what as, I well. think as well. Okay, that's the, the shark, shark that's, is not so. Sorry. sorry. That's what gets them in so much trouble. That mm -hmm. smile. Mm -hmm. I think the I shark think doesn't, have, doesn't have, to have to smile, and he's in trouble, he's in trouble as well trouble because we tell a lot about bad things yeah, about yeah, sharks, about and, sharks and, and it's not the truth either. Not the truth either. Yeah. Shark is not so a bad animal. Education. Education is the key to straightening all that out, and it takes takes time. So we should so see the, the should dolphin see as a predator the in the sea, the like the shark. Like the right. shark. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you can tell, me tell me something? What we can tell the people tell now? The people what they can, what they do. can do. Okay, okay they should they not should buy a ticket buy a for sure for uh, any dolphin show. Well, I, I yeah, I don't want to uh, gloss over that too quickly because that sounds overly simple, simplistic. Don't buy a ticket for a dolphin show. But that is the most powerful thing people can do and tell your friends to do the same. That works. That is the only reason SeaWorld stock is plummeting. People aren't showing up to buy a ticket because they saw Blackfish. The thing about Blackfish, that movie, and people who haven't seen it can probably find it on the web, 
uh, the distributor was CNN. And so it's on television in everybody's living room over and over. You know how CNN, they run something over and over and over again. And people got hammered with that blackfish message and they stopped buying tickets. Same is true with uh, the code. So, yeah, these movies are very important to educate people. It's, that, that, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way to do it. That's the way to reach the most people is through films, through films, television, uh, interviews, magazines. I mentioned Flipper in Brazil and in Guatemala and Nicaragua and all, all the dolphin that we have done, rescues. Uh, when we do these things, projects like that, it gets an enormous amount of media attention. And the message is don't buy a ticket for a dolphin show. And you're reaching millions of people every time you do it. So it's, again, education, education, education. But we tell people to go to our website also, dolphinproject.com, not net, or not the org, but .com. Dolphinproject.com and take action. Just hit take action and you'll see what you can do about Japan and so forth. Yes, for sure. Yes, this for is sure. always this a is good always thing. thing. But also, but also I, think I think every single, every person, single person, person can do something. Can do something. Yeah. So, so. And it doesn't have to be about dolphins. I, and when I, I'm giving a talk, I always bring that up. Um, students, I ask students to find something they can become passionate about. Maybe it's plastic mm -hmm. in the ocean. On the beaches, plastic is a huge problem in them, and there are a number of issues like that that young people can get involved in. And uh, because look, there's no point in saving dolphins without saving their habitat. So, yeah, sharks, dolphins, plastic—all it's all the same thing. It's all—all all of these issues are connected. But here but in here Greece, we have, we have also, the also the problem that the common that the dolphin, common dolphin, dolphin nearly is nearly extingu extinguished, extinguished, I think it's the word. Extinguished, I think it's the word. Yeah, I know. I'm, and, I'm aware of that. And, and I think and I it think is it also a problem, also of, a problem food, of food, when I'm not when wrong. I'm not wrong. A food? Food source? They do not, yeah. have, they enough do not food. have enough food. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right about that. That's a worldwide problem. It's not just Greece. I, I, I mentioned I was in Toronto, Italy just recently, and we went out dolphin watching. Wonderful experience there. Uh, and there used to be many Delphinus delphus, common dolphins, in the uh, Gulf of Toronto. Today they're gone. They're, they killed them all. The fishermen killed them all. Because they get in their nets and they bother them. This is true. I found this in the Greek islands. I find this in Italy. I find it almost everywhere I go. Wherever you have people fishing with nets, there's conflict with fishermen and dolphins competing, competing for more. Every year, it becomes more critical. Yeah, it's true. What you say, the dolphins can't find enough fish. Well, at the same time, they have to compete with these massive fishing ships and uh, factory fishing and, uh, and local fishermen with, with nets. So it's becoming uh, a huge problem for dolphins, finding their food and at the same time having to compete with fishermen who, who will shoot them if they get in their net, kill them. Mm, they see them as pests. It's the same it's like same with like the, monk, the seal. monk seal. It's yeah, also, it's also the, the problem. The, 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 so it means so it also means for the also people, for the it people, is a good, idea, a good idea, idea to stop, to stop eat fish. fish. Yeah, it would be, uh, the oceans probably would regenerate fish stocks if people just stayed away from it for about 10 years. Will that happen? Probably not. There's so much of the world dependent, completely dependent in Japan. You know, we eat fish in America uh, maybe once a week or once every two weeks. In Japan, they eat it every day, three times a day, every day, 20, 127 million people. They consume an enormous amount of fish. Mm. I don't know where they're going to get it from. The our ocean is running out of fish. So it, so would, be, it would be if we cannot, if we cannot stop, stop eating stop fish, fish to eat to less, eat or, less also or also to protected, protected areas, areas to, to uh, let the fish, let the fish um, um, 
grow again. Grow again. Yeah. And they also have a, a problem of uh, when we were in Toronto, on the Gulf of Toronto, in the background was a large ship that was uh, owned by the, chartered by the oil company. And they're using air guns to blast in search of gas and oil. And this is devastating uh, the wildlife, not, not just uh, whales. There's, there, there are sperm whales there. There are many kinds of whales. There are dolphins and turtles and sharks and fish. Everything is impacted by these air guns. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I don't know how they're going to solve that problem. They're, they're trying to, the effort is to try to make the entire bay into a sanctuary, protected and keep the uh, commercial interests out. And I went there to support that effort. That's a lot of the work we do is to go support other people who are doing something. And uh, yeah, that's what I was doing in Greece. Great. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank you so, Thank so, you much, so much for, for your time. For I your appreciate time. it very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good time and good success. success. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.